And we're off. Welcome back to the Portable Karaoke Cast, guys. Griffin and Jackson coming to you live on a Friday night. Friday night. You're hearing this Sunday, though. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. I'm so friggin' glad I shaved my mustache. Yeah, what made you shave it? I was trying the entire week, but the little Filipino in me, pause, the little Filipino in me. Yo, that's kind of sus, bro. You had a little (laughs) Filipino in you? You (laughs) Passport, bro. (laughs) Yo, yo, that's kind of zesty, bro. Yeah, dude. I, yeah, no, I I got my passport and and made my way (laughs) to... To the to the land of a thousand islands, <laughs> thousand islands dressing. More like. Do you think they, they eat thousand island thousand island dressing in, in the Philippines? Hell no. What about seven thousand islands? Because that's how many friggin' islands there are. There's t- that's too many islands, dude. Would you go to the Philippines? Yeah, yeah, I'd go to the Philippines. Dude, I'm. I want to go to like anywhere in Asia. I have no de- desire to go to Europe. Europe sucks, dude. Europe. I I I I spent a semester in Europe. Um, I tra- I hopped around. Have you been there before? No. No. Um, I've only been to Mexico. Paris was like one of the worst places I've ever been to. I've heard it sucks, dude. Other than the um. I've seen enough uh, after the Olympics. There was. <laughs> you were pissed. Too. I've seen enough. <laughs> They're like, whatever river that they were traveling down, I don't want anything to do with that. And then they try to, like, make up for it on the closing um, closing ceremonies. They use, like, uh, God, what was it? Like, Byzantine Christian. Hellenic. Hellenic, Hellenic Christian. Yeah. yeah, Byzantines don't exist anymore. Well, rip, rip, rip Byzantium, dude. Well, I know they don't exist, but they were, like... They were paying tribute to Hellenic Christians or something like that to try to make up for their freaking fuck up on the on the opening ceremony. Is there a difference between Hellenic Christians and Orthodox Christians? They're very similar. Yeah, I think they're like kind of in the same like the Church of Byzantium or like the Hellenic Church or whatever is pretty similar to like Eastern Orthodox. Uh, yeah there's not much of it they they have some dude going into that orthodox church the other day i th- i thought about that that was such a sick church it was a very sick church we just kind of got trapped by a weird lady yeah she really was she, i was like i i wanted to ask her like a question and then she just kind of trapped you and i was like yo i'm trying to get my bro like interested in this can you not like make him feel uncomfortable <laughs> Also, like, we were, other than that one chick, we were, like, the youngest people there by far. Mm -hmm. She might have been younger. I don't know. But, yeah, it was mostly, like, like not a lot of people are showing up. But, like. No. Well, they said, uh, I talked to the the priest, and he said to come on Sunday and and chat with him afterwards. He seemed really cool. Yeah. He he was a really nice guy. No, I've just chatted with him on the phone. Oh, for sure. He's chill. I'm still, I'm going to give it a shot on like a Sunday service. It still feels weird to me with like the saints and everything. Yeah, because you're a Protestant. Ugh. I know. At least I'm not Baptist though, dude. You could never. Baptist is Protestant. It's from the same friggin'. It's, yeah, it, but I'm not a Baptist. It's a, it's a spinoff of all of those. Because yeah. like King Henry VIII wanted to divorce his wife and the Catholic Church was like, no. And then. You get all the wacky, like, sort of, like, American Christian, like, denominations that sprout up as a result. There's like, some that are okay and then some that aren't, though. It's, like, the ones that preach by the Bible and that follow Christian values are chill. But then there's all these other weird spinoffs that are trying to, like, translate it into what their message is, you know? Dude, this is a little off topic, but I thought I, I didn't mention it to you. I, I tried to call you the other night and you didn't pick up. You never pick up. But like, <laughs> yo, pick up the phone, dude. But I was at the gym and there was a guy uh, next to me working out mm-hmm. who had a huge Jesus piece on, like a huge, just like blinged up Jesus piece. And then hanging underneath that was like the most obnoxious freemason you know you know what i'm talking about like the the g with Mm -hmm. the compass yeah it was a gold-plated uh freemasons 
uh, pendant that was hanging underneath that. And he was like... Was this a white guy? Yeah, it was like the most obnoxious thing I've ever seen. Weird. He was young, too. It was weird. He was like he was like 20. He's like probably late 20s, early 30s. But yeah, he was, he was just this jack dude with like a huge um, Freemasons pendant on. They're dude, weird, dude. They're weird, There's, bro. It's a, I get like... Like, most of the Freemasons that I've met in my life, they're like, oh, it's just a drinking club. You know what I mean? It's like, we're, like, for a lot of the people who are in it, like, they go there to hang out at the lodge and, like, drink with their boys. Well, a lot of fraternities are loosely based off of, like, Freemasonic rituals and stuff. Yeah. Skull and bones. (laughs) Yeah. But even, like, the, like, the, like, normal fraternities. Let me just crank one out in this coffin real quick. So, so all the boys think I'm cool. It's not like I mean maybe there it's like Yale skull and bones. So it's lame, like the, dude. Hmm? Yale is so lame. Yeah, Yale's lame. <laughs> Most of the Ivy League schools are free. Like the the thing is now is there's oh like unless you're going to one of those universities for like a like a serious degree, you're on like a med track or whatever, or you're studying like engineering or, or you know a difficult science, you're you're basically getting the same stuff from Harvard or Yale than you would be from like any, uh, from, from like a, Mesa. Yeah. From a state, you know, like literally it's the same curriculum. Mm-hmm. The only difference is you get to write on your, your resume. Oh, look, I went like, um, the one thing that killed, like I, I, I met a couple of dudes from Harvard and most of the courses, if you're outside of like a science degree, most of the courses are like pass fail, which is like, doesn't that feel off? I don't know. It just felt off to me. Like it felt like there should be like a situation where you're you're like trying to get to the top of the class. Like, I mean, it's just less and less important to have a college degree. It's completely watered down. It's own, like so many people I know who have college degrees are some of the biggest dumbasses. Idiots, in- dude. We had a intern at work, and he was he was in college. Yeah, bro. No dumber than a box of rocks yeah there it's 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 adult daycare i mean it's high school too like brother i didn't even like brother i graduated high school with like a two seven bro like i'm an (laughs) idiot all right i mean as far as like books go but like dog this kid had no like problem solving skills whatsoever well, and yeah. that's scary, bro. Like you need, you at least need that. You at least need to be able to do your job. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I get it. Like you don't have to. Like I can't do mental math whatsoever. I ha- I have to have a calculator, but I can at least know. Okay, I need to figure this out to get here, and then I'll be able to do this and send it off to so and so. It's you just a I mean? certificate at this point for you to lord your shitty opinions over your family. Like that's literally what it is. Like. You can, you can. It's not gonna help you anywhere, bro. Like any other, job. Other than the Thanksgiving friggin' table, mm-hmm. right? Like other than like getting into an argument with your uncle, who works on a friggin' oil rig. <laughs> also, like, for like the the one thing I noticed from like college liberals or like col- like people who come out of college with like a very like you know kind of like left leaning mindset, they they seem to friggin' hate <laughs> working class people. <laughs> Like they, like even though they're, they're, you know, they, they, their whole, their whole steez is like, I'm here to defend them and their interests, right? I care about the working man. And then they interact. And then they hate unions. Yeah. yeah they, they, they hate unions. Well, no, they don't hate unions. They hate the guys in the unions. That's, exactly. That's the difference. They, they like the idea of a union, but that, then they meet the guys who are like participating in that union. <laughs> and they're just like, these are the worst people on it. It. It feels phony, right? Um, it, it and it's like, what it is is it's almost like, hey, I know better than you. I can think for you. Mm-hmm. I can think for you, idiot. Let me think for you. And it's like, okay, <laughs> like, it's it. In other words, you come across as like, it's like, brother, you ever replace a compressor? I don't think so. Yeah, you ever? Yeah, you ever do an honest day's work in your life? Hell no. no. <laughs> like, uh, and. It, Really, what it seems to be is just like a way to like legitimize, um, <laughs> legitimize office jobs or corporate jobs. 
like they're trying to separate you know they they're they're trying to behave that like you know a guy who's working in an office uh is capable of doing something that a guy who's working in a sewer can't do meanwhile if you put that guy who's working in the sewer or working on a bridge let them work their way up in the y- office they do or the same let the, thing. or just put them in an office they're showing up on time and they're doing better work than like how you've been in an office you know what i'm talking about you know how little gets done after wednesday nothing nothing you it, it's it is you go from high school which is the daycare to college which is daycare where you can get day drunk the guys that come from the trades and i'm not going to get into what i do but the guys that come from the trade are substantially better yeah for the most part and they feel like people <laughs> yeah i mean like obviously it takes you gotta be very good at math and problem solving to do some of the things yeah, like if you're working in finance or whatever. Or engineering. Yeah. Well, like mechanical engineering. Well, engineering is a real degree. Mm-hmm. As opposed to 90% of college degrees. Like, you can you, – in other words, like, they basically – like, if you're working in, like, like pharmaceuticals, right, or if you're working in, in, um, in a – like, uh, yeah, I guess pharmaceuticals is perfect, but, like, they basically – they're like, why would you go back and – incur debt and get a master's when you could just learn the same stuff in the office right now you know what i mean it's Which stupid but then there's that barrier to entry it's like oh you have to have a college degree to get the to get the entry level job and but it's it like means you don't less even and need, less you don't even need the college degree to get the entry level job you learn more on the job than you do we got dude our generation we got bamboozled we got no we got psyoped we like all of our parents were like go to college you you know get the degree learn you know learn what you need to learn it's i time. can't tell you how many times i've heard just get a degree and then you'll be able to figure it out it, from there everybody like, has a degree and most people are friggin idiots yeah. <laughs> like like most people did it's not, not hard to get a degree bro no not even close like it's literally a I mean, check. I don't have one, but, you know, it's a, <laughs> <laughs> it's a checkbox, though, at the end of the day, mm-hmm. right? But, like, y- you know, like, y- you you do run into this, this constant thing where you're talking to people with college degrees, and there's almost, like, for the vast majority of these people, there's almost no distinction between them and a guy who was a heroin addict three years ago. No. Some of the hardest working people I've ever met in my entire life were heroin addicts three years prior. Yep. You can you can speak to that like you I know, know I know I know people who are VPs of companies who are heroin addicts. Yeah. Mhm. <laughs> Hard <laughs> salt of the earth, hard working people. Once they get their once people they, they're just hustlers. That's yeah. they they hustle to get their drugs <laughs> and they hustle in the workplace. Like there's something to be said for an addictive personality, dude. Like well, you it gives you a level of hustle that a lot of people don't have. Well, you can shift – if you know how to, like, shift gears from mm-hmm. that, right? If you mm-hmm. can shift away from the thing that was destructive, it can be immensely productive. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Also, just, like, it gives – like, so many of those dudes, too I, – I, I mean, we met plenty of them, but, like, they were working, like, 75, 80-hour weeks, if not more, right? So, like – but, like, you get, you get out of college, you get a job – you work 45 hours a week, 40 hours a week, and then you're, you're collecting a paycheck, right? But, you know, like, it, it is a massive so – I think it's just a big debt psyop, right? You're just trying to get people <laughs> – you're just trying to get people paying into this thing indefinitely. Like, how many – like, in your life, how many, how many chicks do you know who are just saddled in, like, 150 grand in debt? Just quite, quite a few. Just a ton, right? <laughs> like, and even even now with like um, the community college route, like even a state school, I, I I don't know how much a state school is now, but it's got to be like close to sixty k, right? I mean, if in state tuition and all that shit is like, it, it does make it a lot cheaper. It's one good thing about California is like if you go to community college and do the two years get your associates you can pretty much go to any i think you it you can go to any uc or any csu or any csu which is pretty dope great deal 
It is a good fucking deal. But then, like, it's what you do with that. If you do go the college route, like, there's no reason why you shouldn't just work for a couple of years, learn what the fucking world's like, and just go to community college. If I could go back to myself at 18, mm-hmm. if, like, if I could hop in a time machine at 18, and I could go back and talk to him, I'd just be like, go community college, like, and if you're going to go to college, do a STEM degree. Because mm-hmm. that's the only that's the only way you, it's it's really, like, worth it. That's where the Asians kind of have it figured out. The, yeah. They just, if you're not doing a STEM degree, then you're an idiot. Yeah. To them. Well, no, it makes sense because it's the only one that has a return on investment. Absolutely. But, and but it's it's a particular type of STEM degree. If you're doing bio. That's the problem with white parents, dude, is they're too lenient for the most part. Yeah, they have 90s brain, dude. Yeah, they're like, yeah, just like do whatever you want. Like you want to, <laughs> you want to like paint a picture, paint a fucking picture. And it's like dog. The thing that's like hol- get me math tutoring. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that rules too is that um, for years all you were hearing and like twenty if you go back to like twenty fifteen, all you were hearing was people being like, Well, technology is gonna get rid of all of the, the hard labor jobs. It's gonna get rid of roofing, it's gonna get rid of plumbing, it's it's all gonna go away. And now like with AI AI is just getting rid of the artists first. <laughs> like, the then, artists are completely worthless. Meanwhile, you go on social media, guys that are, like, they're, like, pipe fitters and fucking oil riggers are just doing money spreads. Like, <laughs> it's crazy, bro. Yeah, they're... Those motherfuckers make bank. I mean, it, it's hard on your body, though. You pay the price. You pay the price no matter what. Everybody's got to pay the troll toll, dude. But that shit is hard on it. Your body will break down in well, the trades. But yeah, but like a like a man's going to do that. True. Uh, like, I, I'm not hating on it. I think it's a better route to go than the military or the trades are the way to go. Right? I would like, say just the trades. Like the military is kind of like, like, do you really want to like. Pro- I mean, dude, if you want to. Okay. Military, if you go special forces. Or if you just do four years and then reap the benefits after. Yeah, but, like, you also have to, like, think about, like, how politicians are treating the – like, dude, there's guys in Ukraine right now. We're not at war with Ukraine. We're not at war with Russia, right, last time I checked? Right. Like, if you go if you go to a guy in Washington and be like, hey, are we at war with the Russians? They'd be like, no, of course not. We're just supporting Ukraine. It's like, dude, I know people personally in my life – who have gone over to Ukraine? Wow. Yeah, in the last in the last two years, I know people. <laughs> like maybe it's my proximity to a marine base too, but like, y- y- there's clearly some fuckery going on, dude. Where it's like we're pretending that like it, it, it as long as they're volunteers, right? We're technically not supplying them with weapons and fighting on the behalf of America, right? Mm-hmm. But it's like. So like, yeah, I get like dudes will go and do that, but like, would you like recommend to an 18 year old in the climate that we're in right now, if you're talking to like an 18 year old dude, would you tell him to go join the military right now? Probably not. I tell him to go learn how to be a plumber and electrician. Yeah, definitely. That's the first route I would go for any any kid if coming if, out of high school. If shit comes, I actually had a kid at my Muay Thai gym the other night who was graduate in high school and he was like yeah dude like i just don't really know what i want to do i was like brother go learn how to be an hvac tech like go learn how to be a plumber you don't even have to do that bro just like you can go to college later it's always going to be there but like while you're young yeah learn a trade it's but also too there's the, the there's the added dimension where like you have these guys um who are going to learn these trades and there, there is earning potential there. Right. And the, like the thing that people were selling you in high school in particular was all of those things are going away. That's that. I mean, I don't know if you, you heard that right. Growing up that like, like being a roofer is going to go away. Being a carpenter is going to, because it's going to be replaced by robots or whatever. carpenter is actually kind of going away. How? Because machines can do a lot of what carpenters do. But like, okay. But whereas like plumbers, electricians, would you rather HVAC, would like you rather that? hire five guys who are trained to be 
a carpenter, if you're running a, like a home improvement, ha- like a home improvement company, right? Your small like home improvement company. Would you rather have five guys who you know can get the job done who aren't going to run out of battery, <laughs> right? Or would you get a robot to do that where it might get like it might there's plenty like have you seen how uh, this is a this is a poor analogy okay i know this is a poor analogy but have you ever tried to 3d print anything it's fucking impossible negative it's yeah. impossible <laughs> like you mess like while you're learning to 3d print things you mess up 9 out of 10 times like the technology is precise and it is there but like getting it to work every single time is just like a company's just going to be like why would i why would I bank on this when I could just hire dudes to do this? No, you're not wrong. You're you're definitely not wrong. I'm just saying like if if like the sole car- carpentry sorry. out of any of the trades is probably the one that would go away. I guess. Yeah. I I would I would argue with you with you there just because like in terms of like unless it's like a massive friggin' company, right? What what trade do you think would go away first? <sighs> Um, maybe, maybe like for grunt work, if we're saying like the lowest level in that career, right? No, I'm just saying like trade in general, like which one do you think would become obsolete? M- maybe plumbing. Maybe. Really? Maybe. Because like you Why? could, actually then again, that doesn't make sense because if you have a robot down in like, like shitty water, there's going to be a lot more problems with that robot. Over time, so yeah, probably none of them are going away. Maybe roofing, maybe. But even, but even like a robot sitting in the sun, putting up, sh- you know, putting up shingles on a roof, it might get overheated, right? That thing out ain't out working, fucking Jorge, bro. No, there's no shot. Dude. No shot. No, sh- no shot. If the if the Home Depot gang, if if you have one robot from iRobot. Remember, I, did you ever watch iRobot? Yeah. <laughs> That's a beast of a movie, That's dude. That's a good movie. <laughs> that movie rocks. Shia LaBeouf and uh, Shia LaBeouf, that one hot chick who I can't name her name. And Megan uh, Fox? No, it's not Megan Fox. I don't know. I'm That's just, Transformers, yeah, you that dumbass. Transformers. <laughs> that. Tra- that, that movie rocks. Oh, dude. Kathy Bates. Yeah, Kathy Bates. Yeah, the hot. The, the hot lady. That Kathy piece Bates. of ass, Ka- Kathy Bates. She's hot as hell. She's so she's a baddie, dude. But like, if like you've seen like Boston Dynamics robots, right? Yes. Like those things are super cool, but they're probably like until you mass produce those things, like that's that's gonna cost so much money. Like that's so much overhead because mm-hmm. you're gonna have to hire a shit ton of people to make sure the robot's not fucking up. You're gonna have to hire a software guy to make sure the robot's not gonna like turn around and go like, you know, schizo on you or whatever. That'd be kind of cool. That'd be a good, uh, like a movie where like kinda... yeah, Tim Dillon talked about it. He's like, you see the thing and you're like, Oh, that's cool. And then you realize that the thing messes up all the time. Yeah. It's dude. Like how, how hard was it for McDonald's to do like the, uh, the automated ordering system? impossible that, dude. T- that took seven years well and i mean have you ever been to the sushi place with the little robot that brings you your food and shit it's a fun gimmick it's yeah, yeah. the the thing like gives the drink to the wrong table half the time <laughs> <laughs> the thing the thing's <laughs> actually you, retarded and like you, and you can't get mad at it either because it's not it's 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 literally autistic it doesn't have a theory of mind, so you can't be like, hey, actually, come over here. The robot's just going to be like, eh, you know, like. <laughs> it just runs into the wall. Yeah. Zzz, zzz. It's the only, re- like, whatever dream you have, like, whatever, like, wet dream these technologists have for a future without, like, the working man is just not going to happen. Like, it's not going to be cyberpunk, dude. It's not going to be cyberpunk. Like, it just won't be. Like, I know Elon... As much as, like, we want it to be, you know? I mean, I think... I don't really want it to be, but there I, might be a, be kind of cool. There might be a net negative from that, because people are already lazy as shit. Yeah. Let you me know, ask you something. Yeah, what's up, dude? If you could be anything out of these three, what would you be? A cowboy, a samurai, or a pirate? Shit. Those are all so good. 
Uh, samurai. Okay, can I go? You know, down. The, let's let's start with a cowboy. If you're a cowboy, like what era of cow? Like, am I like a fat, like an overweight, like tech, like modern Texan guy who pretends to be a cowboy? No, you're like in their prime. Okay. And they're prime for each. Not to not shout out the the Texan cowboys. Those guys are still sick. It's that's hard work though. That that like being a cowboy is hard work. It's tough work. It's not. It reminds it me. It ain't the city life. Did you ever see that? Did you ever see that? Uh, you saw the movie Hell or High Water, right? Yes. Beast of a movie. Great movie. There's that one exchange that you um, saw Brokeback Mountain, right? Yeah, <laughs> Beast of a movie. <laughs> <laughs> I can't quit you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Jake Gyllenhaal and the Joker having having gay, gay cowboy sex, <laughs> having gay cowboy sex, rough trade, gay <laughs> cowboy sex. <laughs> They're going on a camping trip. It's hard out there for these boys. <laughs> I'm bricked up, Lucy. <laughs> All right, answer, Car- answer the question. Samurai probably, or a pi- if I get to be like a Blackbeard pirate, where I get to free slave ships. Yeah, That's dude, I mean, you're a pirate. You do whatever the fuck like you want. Blackbeard's kind of did, dude. Did, I, I'm familiar. Did I ever tell you about? I'm familiar with Edward Teach. Yes, I. Yes, I know you're familiar. Do you know like how he showed up on boats? How? When he went to raid a boat, so he had that big black beard, obviously. Um, but he would tie like little candles or like little like wicks in his in his beard and set those wicks on fire and so they'd start smoking right and so when he boarded another ship and his guys started killing the crew they just saw a guy in the distance whose head was on fire whose head was smoking that's crazy it's fucking nuts he's so sick yeah blackbeard's cool and he and then could you imagine if you're a slave like you're on a slave ship like a French slave ship, and all the Frenchmen are like, "We want to touch you. We want to give you kisses. Come over here." And then a guy whose head is on fire comes and kills all the Frenchmen. And he's like, "You want to? You guys join <laughs> with us? You guys want to like? You guys want to party? You guys want to go like drink rum and like, like fuck hookers?" <laughs> <laughs> They'd probably. They're be- like, absolutely. I like this guy. Yeah, like. Could you imagine, like, you have no – and b- back then, people were, like, way superstitious, right? You'd be like, that's a demon. That's a demon. That's an avenging angel coming <laughs> coming to, to give me what's what. But you're thinking about it in French, so it sounds like gay or whatever. It's like, wee wee. Wee wee. Ma pe- croissant. Ma- wee wee. <laughs> Ma penis is so hard right now. Black beard. <laughs> but, like, no, like – he, so yeah, probably a pirate of those three. I if agree. if I can rank it, I'd go pirate, samurai, cowboy. Feel that. With with samurai, you get to cut people's faces off. Have you seen like? But old? then if you like dishonor, you got to commit seppuku. Seppuku. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, that's kind of a si- like. There was a guy. I'm forgetting his name, but he was like a pro uh, Japanese nationalist after the Second World War. He was like, dude, it's so lame that we lost. It's like, this sucks. <laughs> like, I don't want to lose. Like, this sucks. It's like, we have to do anime and Hello Kitty now? I don't want to fucking die, dude. <laughs> like, this guy, he was trying to get the boys, you know, he was trying to get the boys back in town. Mm-hmm. He, was trying to get, he was trying to get them amped up. And he, uh, he couldn't do it. Like, he lost his political election. And while he was on an American airbase, he got up in one of the towers and committed seppuku. <laughs> and one of his boys, like one of his lieutenants was like, I'll give you an honorable death. And um, like like with a samurai sword, like tried to cut the guy's head off and missed three times. <laughs> oh my god. Dude, um, you know Count Dankula? Yes. I've sent you some of his stuff. There's um there's a Count Dankula video that I go back to like at least once a year, um and it's this Japanese nationalist. He was a yakuza Japanese nationalist who uh went to California and became a porn star. He Whoa. was like a he was like a he was like a pilot and he became a porn star back in the seventies, 
and he came back to Japan because one of his one of the uh, politicians that he was like a big simp for turned out that he was like he was like taking bribes and stuff from like Lockheed Martin and he's like that's dishonorable as shit dude fuck you this guy got in an airplane and kamikazed this this Japanese politician's house in the 60s whoa and he missed he hit the house but he missed the guy oh no but the Japanese politician was like I respect the commitment dude that was kind of sick <laughs> All right. <laughs> I see. I I'll see, chill out. <laughs> I see you, brother. I see you, dog. One of the most insane, just a Japanese Yakuza porn star turned kamikaze pilot. One of, uh, what a life, dude. That might be like. When that's you, a top ten. When you're standing in front of the Lord and you're being judged, you'd be like, dude, that's a hell of a run. Sick run. Like, I, I think you might be going to hell, dude, but that's. That's a pretty sick run right Hell there. Run. <laughs> can't can't lie, dude. Uh but yeah, dude, Japan's had like some pretty some pretty gnarly political like assassination attempts and assassinations. Like there's that one um I think his name is Atoya Yamaguchi. Do you know this like he's like a he's like a like a right wing meme or whatever. But he there was like um uh, a, a Japanese socialist, like he was like the father of the Japanese Socialist Party, and this this guy, uh, this seventeen year old kid, uh, I think his name was Atoya Yamaguchi. He ran up on stage and stabbed him with a samurai sword. Jesus. Twice on camera back in the fifties, and completely killed the uh, the the Japanese Socialist Movement. <laughs> Damn. He literally, I mean, he didn't literally decapitate, but it's like a, a crazy video. It's on, it's on YouTube. Um, and then there was that one guy, uh, the guy who killed Shinzo Abe. I sent you that video, right? The guy who made his own shotgun. Oh yeah. Yeah. He was just like this. So like, uh, there's a, a there's like this like evangelical Christian cult in Japan called like the unification church i think and they're like really predatory like they 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 got started in korea by like this korea like it's a crazy it's a crazy cult like um it's not like christianity it's like a straight up cult like uh this korean guy uh who hated like north korea and hated communism based but based based. (laughs) but he 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 would hold like these stadium marriages where he'd get, he'd like, he'd be the offici, like he'd be the aficionado or whatever, and he'd marry like three hundred couples at once. Jesus, it's friggin' nuts. Anyway, they they went over to Japan and completely took over like the main political party in Japan, and like one of their things is like they're really predatory with like their like they own a lot of the hospitals, and um. They're really, really predatory with the payments, right? So they, they, they bring these people in for like really good healthcare, and then they saddle them in debt to get them paying into the cult for like decades. Destroyed this guy's like entire life because his mom was sick, and then that guy turned around and assassinated Shinzo Abe with a homemade shotgun. Base. It's nuts, dude. It's it's the wild west over there. Just like a guy. Just a guy in his like little one room apartment, like figuring out how to <laughs> how to. That's make. like a big. Uh, that's a big hustle in the Philippines is making guns, making ghost guns. Same in um in uh in Myanmar, Myanmar, you know like what's going on there, like where like the uh, the rebels are fighting like the military government. It's like the military government, the rebels, and the the there's like also jihadists. Yeah. Over there, yeah. It's friggin' wild, dude. Friggin' wild. I'll take another. Thank you. I appreciate it. But um, yeah, the yeah, there's uh a bunch of dudes like who like they buy like three D printers and stuff, and they have like these milling machines, and they build like it's like the way that they're like they're able to like give. Then again, it's Southeast Asia. Like, there's probably no shortage of like AK forty sevens down there. I'd imagine. I mean, they could 
probably get yeah i can get them pretty easily yeah they're probably pretty dirt cheap have you seen like um have you seen like the uh the thailand draft no that's wild because like there's a lot of you know lady boys Mm -hmm. but like the draft is mandatory in thailand so every you know when you turn 18 you have to go to the draft office because they go down and they fight like jihadist pirates down Mm -hmm. in the south Mm -hmm. and so like they'll literally so like some guys will like dress themselves like they're not lady boys but they'll deliberately dress themselves up like lady boys so that they can dodge the draft jeez and like these like military officers will take these lady boys and quote unquote check (laughs) to see if they're eligible yeah (laughs) wild (laughs) absolutely insane and then there's guys who like um they do like the common stuff where like they like try to break their own arms and stuff to get out of the draft dude i saw i was watching um just on my on my instagram it's a lot of muay thai highlights yeah and there was one where there was like a lady boy who was fighting a guy unreal and like the lady boy comes in and does like the little her little thing you know walk in yeah and the guy just walks in no music nothing <laughs> and just beats the fuck out of her dude that's it's gnarly crazy. i mean so it was a legit fight like it wasn't like he just walked up and started beating her ass but like you told me that one of that one of like miss louisiana or something like that it was maryland miss maryland <laughs> yeah was a was a lady boy lady lady boy lady boy married to a good old-fashioned united states marine right yeah, there that's gnarly <laughs> gnarly not a good look for the marines marines are not beating the charge dude no there's no there's no way they're, they're <laughs> i thought it was navy though i mean marines are part of the navy kind of they're the the marines are the tops <laughs> 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 The Navy is way bigger, but the Marines are smaller and they're more hard hitting, right? The few, the proud. The few, the proud, the tops. Oh, proud, huh? Yeah, the few, the prideful, the tops. Yeah. That's. But I mean, hey, you know, first one's in, last one's out. If you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> last one's out of the Lady Boy Club. <laughs> they can't stop, dude. They can't stop. Bro. They're in. They're in Thailand, dude. They can't stop. <laughs> Dude, but there's plenty of like women in Thailand. I know, too. but it's so much funnier that they go out, that that it's so much funnier that they that they go after the lady boys. Oh, I know. They're they're like they're just like they're just like the boat's docked. The boat's docked, guys. Let's go. <laughs> let's get it. <laughs> Hear a bald eagle cry. <laughs> oh my god. No, but like, yeah, the um the draft and. Dude, also the draft in the Philippines does not look that different either. Then again, there's some wild stuff going on in the Philippines right now too. There's always some wild stuff going on in the Philippines. <laughs> I, I just read a story about a uh, – I, I think I told you this last week. I read a story about um, – so like the, the Chinese are beefing with the Filipinos right now because like there's like northern islands in the Philippines that the Philippines are like, those are ours. China's like, but what if they're ours, right? <laughs> And um, I read the story, and it was a a, a, a Filipino co- uh, Filipino Coast Guard uh, uh, personnel guy or whatever uh, got his thumb cut off by a by a Chinese Navy officer. Jesus! Like they just hopped onto the boat. They hopped off the porch. Yeah, they the the jap the the the, the uh, not Japanese the the Chinese guys hopped off the boat, dude. Could you imagine how terrifying that is? <laughs> because like them chinese boys hopped off the porch dude for just, real for real just getting your thumb cut off on a boat <laughs> jeez it's a dude there's a different like again we are like sheltered as hell in the united could you imagine like if that was a story coming out of like the uh the coast guard off of like san diego <laughs> <laughs> that a, a cartel drug runner or whatever hopped off their boat and cut off a guy's finger. <laughs> yeah, that would never happen to our boys. No, it wouldn't happen. Never happen to our boys. Dude, there's like a bunch of guys in Washington, like a bunch of like neocons and neolibs that want to use like uh, military force against the cartels. 
Like they're they're like they're like talking about. I that. don't think that that. I mean, that's not gonna work. No, it's just gonna splinter them, isn't it? I mean, like. I mean, theoretically, like, it's kind of like a Hamas situation. Like, it's like those guys are so intertwined with the community down there that it's like. And everybody's getting paid off. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like the the Mexican government doesn't want that. No. It, the what? federales are all in their pocket. It. I mean, like. I did, I did, there was, like, an insane story that I heard of this, um, because, like, like, cer- certain cartels will just show up to, like, a ranch house and just be like, this is our land now. Like, you can either work for us or we'll kill you and take your land, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, there was, like, this old guy who was living on a ranch. This was back in, I think this was back in the early 2000s. It's a crazy story. But the uh, cartel... Do you know like uh, Zateo cartel? Mm-mm. They were like, they are like one of the first cartels to do like extreme violence. If you you know you know about like cartel violence, mm-hmm. they were the ones that like popularized that and like made it into like a power thing, and like made like basically prompted the other cartels to follow suit. They showed up to this guy's ranch and he was like in his seventies, and they were like, hey, this is our land. You know, we're going to take this. And he's like, no, you're not going to take my land. I've, I was born here. I'll die here. And they're like, you really want to die over this land? You're going to die over this. You're going to die for this ranch. And he goes, someone is. It's a sick story. I'm forgetting the guy's name. Shout out that. I think his name was like Don Garza or something like that. Will he do anything cool? Yeah, dude. <laughs> he, so they show, so after he, he, he rebuffs these guys. And like you know, they they're like you're gonna regret this, dude. We're gonna come back, and you're gonna regret you're you're gonna totally regret this. They show up to the ranch house, and he's just sitting in the ranch house, and he picks off like five of them. Damn. With, yeah, he picks off like five of them, and he's like running around the house, changing positions, and picking these guys off <laughs> as they're and. The cartel ends up firing nine hundred rounds into the building. And throw they throw grenades into the building and they Jeez. they eventually kill the guy, but like he went out like a fucking champ. Dude, that's that's real life Gran Torino. That's how you're gonna go. Are you really gonna put that Lucy in your pocket? So was that did that piss you off? It didn't piss me off. Oh, okay. I'm just I'm just I, I inquiring. Kept, I, I'm just I was wondering. I was catching a dome. And so I was like, I've already have I'm gonna this. Save it for later. I'm riding the dome, so I'm already <laughs> pause. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I'm already, I'm already there. So like, I might as well just save it for later, right? You've already climaxed. Yeah, I've already, I've already hit the zenith, dude. But like, that that elicited like when I heard that story, I was like, damn, dude. That's a beast move. That's every dude's fantasy. Yeah. And like I know I wouldn't have the courage to do what that guy did. But not like, many would. Not well, well, not many do. But he he's like that's kind of like an example that like if if the pe- like the the thing is th- there's an there's another dimension to this too cuz his kids were grown, they were out of the house, right? He didn't have a wife. He was living alone. So he didn't really have much to lose. Yeah, he had less to lose than somebody who's like working a farm in Mexico who has a family that can be treated as collateral. You exactly. Know? So it's it's a it's a little bit different, but what a hell of a way to go, dude. Definitely. That's what always confuses me about those like expats that go and live down in Mexico, though. It's like you tell you you can talk to me until you're blue in the face about how safe it is, but it's like. Whenever a situation that com- like that comes up, like what are you gonna do, bro? Well, that's where you know, um, that's where all the FLDS people went, right? Like the um, a lot of the FLDS guys. Uh, when they but I'm just talking about like someone like you or me or like our dads or something like going down there and just setting up, just buying land and like living down there. But you don't own the land. I know exactly. You but- don't. The the Mexican government owns all the land in Mexico. And so, by proxy, the cartels own all the land in Mexico. It is a captured state. 
I think the conversation is, is fucked up too because you're like, you know, you have people who are fleeing from Mexico, right? And you have people fleeing from South America, but like it would be an objectively better situation for everybody involved if you made those places livable for those people, right? If you made, if you made like the average law abiding person in Mexico able to like live like a meaningful life within the context of Mexico and change the, the situation. Cause like it, it, you know, it, it is one of those things where you're like, Oh, it's, it's hopeless. You know, you could be like doomer about it and be like, Oh, you know, it's the problems that, that they face in Mexico is it's so insurmountable. Like how, how could anybody overcome that? But there's like plenty of States throughout history that uh sorry Ooh, one second taking a sip of water catching the dome plenty of states throughout history that have changed their situation you know there are there are places on earth that were 30 years prior they were like absolutely like dangerous hell holes to live in and the people rose up and they were like we're not we don't want to live like this anymore so we're either going to elect people to change the situation or we're going to change it by force, right? I don't think that that's out of the question for Mexico. I don't think that's out of the question for Colombia. I don't think that's out of the question for uh, Venezuela, you know? It's not. Especially like, what, you're giving me a look. <laughs> no, no, I'm just I'm just trying to... I'm trying to think. Yeah, yeah. But I, I'm just saying that there is th- that... E- as bleak as things might be now, I think that there there will come a time and a place where the people who are living in that situation will be like, by hell or high water, we have to make a difference. Well, it's got to be them though. It can't be the can't be the U.S. No, of course not. Every single time over the last, um, really since the fall of the Berlin Wall, right? Really since the fall of the Soviet Union, America's foreign policy has just been we're going to go somewhere and change change them for the better right because we know America it's, fuck yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> i mean it, it, it it's a i guess it's a it's it's a uh it's an idealistic vision for what you're capable of doing but like also you're not learning from history there's so many empires there's so many like you know, massive governments that have tried to make things better in other places and try to try to model their success in another place. And time and I like, look at the Romans. The Romans tried to do that too. The Ottomans tried to do that. All these, all these empires throughout history have tried, you know, you know, to Romans really fucked up. They killed the son of God. Yeah. They really, <laughs> They, well, they must have, and then they tried to they tried to cover it up a little bit. <laughs> they tried to be like, "Well, <laughs> what if we actually were the first church?" <laughs> <laughs> the Roman Catholics are pretty dirty for that. <laughs> Just being crazy. like doing the doing the the most epic oopsie in history, and then trying to clean it up with a PR stunt. Well, hey, that's you know, that's what it's all about. I mean, salvation. They, yeah, I mean, they did make some, like, if you go into, like, that that was the one thing that pissed me off when I went to, to Paris. Because, um, like, the one place I really wanted to see when I was in Paris was Notre Dame. And, or Notre Dame, sorry, Notre Dame. Go Irish. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, the one place I really wanted to see was, was Notre Dame. Um, and when I went there, it was right after the fire. Remember, like, the fire at Notre mm-hmm. Dame? Um, it was right after that, so I wasn't able to actually, like... You know all the pictures of, like, Mary and Jesus survived that fire? Like, nothing else did. Wild. It, it, shit like that is just, like, it's, bro, I, there's, what? There's some crazy images Follow Like, it, it is... It, when I saw the images after the, after the fire in Notre Dame... The first thought I had when I was looking at like the interior of like the cathedral was like it just reminded me of World War Two. It's it's kind of crazy. The, that was the one thing I really liked about London when I was there. Um, do you know St. Paul's Cathedral? Mm-hmm. 
It's it's really dope. St. Paul. London is a bit of a nightmare in terms of it's like they they tried too hard to modernize their downtown. And so all the buildings look ridiculous. You know what I mean? I've heard it's just like New York. No, it's worse. New York has some cohesion to their designs. Like New York has some crazy buildings, right? Like, you know, like the Jenga tower in New York, Mm -hmm. like that one's like, Oh, that's kind of cool. You know, whatever. Right. It's like, it's, it's different. Um, but like if you're walking through Manhattan, like most of the buildings look like they fit together. When you're in downtown London and you're looking out at the skyline, the buildings all look crazy together. <laughs> they it looks like you have you ever been into like did you have like the type of grandma that like just collected like knickknacks? Of course. And put them on a shelf and some of them go together but most of them don't. No, it's all cohesive. My grandmother loves roosters. Roosters. Loves roosters. She loves the cock. Don't you ever say that <laughs> again. That's funny. Te- that's a good one. No, te- no, te- that te- place, te- that's funny. That's te- funny. Hey, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, keep, keep talking. <laughs> you look like you're about to beat my ass. <laughs> you're, like the, you're like, hold on a second. You put down the mic. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry and I'm sorry. we're back. <laughs> All you hear for the rest of the podcast is me going. <laughs> Well, anyways, did you hear about what's going on in Ukraine? <laughs> oh my god, uh, dude! But no, I'm, I'm sorry. No, I'm it's sure fine, bro. She's I, a lovely it's woman. Funny. Sure. It's funny. It's fine. Just keep talking. But like, uh, no, okay. So you're she's co- she's a, she's cohesive. But you've been in like an old woman's house where you're just like you're collecting every vacation you've been on. There's like a knickknack that doesn't <laughs> fit with the other ones. Greetings from Myrtle Beach. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> that <sighs> yes we got the, the one thing that the one thing i will say about the working class bros is we got to get them away from from myrtle beach and atlantic city in daytona beach we got to stop that it, it dude people from ohio and michigan and new jersey think myrtle beach is the sickest place it's hilarious it's such a nightmare and dude. then people from the carolinas are like you <laughs> myrtle beach sucks also, any like we could lose the entire state of New Jersey. I've never been to a place in New Jersey and thought, "Oh, this is wonderful." Like I want to, I could see myself living here. It's like every no, single. I like Princeton and stuff's pretty. I've driven through there. Yeah, Princeton's all. It's right. like wooded. It's pretty yeah. cool. Is Princeton closer to the south of New Jersey? Am I? It's like next to like. It's like, is Princeton in the same place in that episode of The Sopranos? Remember that episode where they go and try to kill the Russian guy? Remember that episode where they, they put the Russian guy in the in the carpet and they, they take him out to the woods? That's like one of the first episodes, huh? No, it's in like season two or season three. It's a good episode. And, and Polly and, uh, and Chris get stuck out in the woods. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they blow off his face. <laughs> like the, the Russian guy like hits them with a shovel and like runs away. And the thing I love about that is he gets away and he's never mentioned again <laughs> because they're both terrified to tell Tony that they, dr- they fumbled the bag. <laughs> <laughs> they're both terrified. Like Tony's like expecting them to go bury this guy. Right. And uh, they, they're like, Oh my God, he got away. <laughs> Dude, Polly's Polly's one of the best characters in the show. And he's um in real life he was a connected guy. Mm-hmm. I don't know how high up he was. Tony Sirico is his name. Okay, so he was like he was pretty he was pretty high up. I think so, yeah. Damn. He was like a he was a wise guy. Shit. He was a wise guy. <laughs> yeah. Now they there will never be nothing will ever top The Sopranos. It's re- that really was. That the, was the pinnacle. Yeah, that was the – you can't make a better show. Like, even, like, a show that's comp- – it's different, but it's kind of comparable. Like, Breaking Bad doesn't even hold a candle to it. No. Like, Breaking Bad's great, too. Great. It's a great show. but Unreal like real show. But if you're going to compare it to the, the – again, I'll go back to the ending of that show. 
It's genius. The the last scene of that show is genius. Just the fact that a bunch of idiots from uh, when that when that show first when that episode first dropped, just a bunch of idiots from New Jersey who were expecting an explosive moment in the final scene, just nothing happens. Was, but everything happens, right? Nothing happens and everything happens. Well, uh, um, a lot of people thought their like cable dropped and this stuff. This shit was insane because the that did more numbers than the Super Bowl. It aired on Super Bowl Sunday. That's how fucking good that show was. Dude. That's unreal. I know. It's so funny. Just the amount of rage that you'd have to like. There had to have been massive art, like massive arguments between a husband and a wife. In 2006, when that scene, you know, because like the last, it's a cut to black, right? Mm-hmm. The last, ep, the last scene is a cut to black. So, could you imagine just the rage of being like, "Did you pay the fucking cable bill? Did you pay the bill, <laughs> Diane? What the fuck?" <laughs> like, there were marriages that ended because somebody didn't understand the ending. I yeah, and then like a lot of people were like, "The ending sucked." It rules. Ending was great. It's so good. Because it doesn't, it, like, whether he gets... For us men of culture that can appreciate it... Well, no, he's dead. Yeah, he dies. He's just dead. Mm-hmm. And the thing that's great about that is they tell you what's going to happen. They tell you what's going to happen throughout the entire show. Like Christopher's uh, coma, where he's talking about how um, he goes... Remember when he, he, he gets shot in, like, season two? Mm-hmm. Um, he's three, in three o'clock or whatever. Yeah. He says three o'clock, but yeah. also, um, he, he's talking to, to his dad, Dickie in hell. He goes, he's like, my dad was playing. My dad was, was down in hell and he was playing, um, he was playing poker with a Roman soldier and, a, and an Irishman. Remember that scene mm-hmm. or something like that? And he's like, and he, and he told me every single day they kill me the way I died in real life. And it hurts. That's like what the ending of that show is, is him reliving his death in hell over and over again because he can't get his shit together. He can't change. The whole point of the show is, will Tony change? Will he have a come to Jesus moment? And Melfi gives up on him. And he doesn't change and he dies because of that. It's awesome. Now, The Many Saints of New York can suck my dog nuts. shit movie can suck my nuts it's such a stupid movie that was the worst it's so stupid it didn't need to happen no they were just try- i don't know what that was what that like why were they trying to cash out on that it also because people started to rewatch the sopranos and then they were like oh hell yeah the, the thing that pissed did me- david chase even direct it yeah he did fuck which is annoying right because yeah. it's like you can only catch lightning in the bottle once yeah. That's really what that is. You, you can't, because it's so heavy-handed. It's so heavy-handed at the end. Also, can we stop? Hollywood, can you guys friggin' stop giving um, acting careers to great actors' children? He wasn't that good. Also, I'll go even further to that. Don't. Why are we giving Rob Schneider's daughter a country music career? He doesn't. That, that doesn't need to happen. Rob Schneider's funny enough as it is. I like Rob Schneider. He's but enough. His of, daughter is an awful. Yeah, he's, awful country singer. He's enough of a beast as it is. Like he's he undefeated on Twitter. Rob. <laughs> <laughs> him. Him and Antonio Brown are on the Mount Rushmore of Twitter. Oh. <laughs> him. <laughs> Tate and Antonio Brown I'm trying to think of some others. I'm I sure can't that, think of any others. No, I mean, off the, that's off the a pretty dumb. good list right there of just guys who are just like wild. Dude, Antonio Brown is so sick on Twitter. <laughs> Cracker of the week. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I'm going to pull up his Twitter. He's the man, dude. But yeah, like we got to – we. Like, I understand, like, oh, you're in this position where you can give your kid a career. But, like, it's annoying. Like, everybody had said, it's like, what happened to um, James Gandolfini was tragic. He died young. Yeah, that sucked, dude. And he's, like, did you ever see True Romance? No. You never saw True Romance? No. Do you know, um, that's that's not a Tarantino movie. Like, Tarantino didn't direct it. 
I th- I can't remember who directed it. I I've been told to watch it though. True. Uh, tr- uh, uh, Tarantino wrote the script for True Romance. That's why it rules. It's such a good movie. I haven't seen that movie in years, but it it uh, Gandolfini's awesome in it. Gandolfini also did like he 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 actually had um he had a stint on Broadway too. Did you know that? Oh yeah, yeah. I I he was kind of dove into his lore a little bit. Yeah, it's so sad. What you know? He did. I mean, he he was in his early forties when he died, right? He's like forty one or something. Did he die in Italy? Yeah. Yeah. Which is like, bro, it's poetic justice, bro. You got it. I mean, he he, you can either get into a gunfight with the cartel or die in Italy. Like that's dude. That's that's dude heaven. Dying in dying in front of a a plate of lasagna, in northern Italy or wherever the hell he was, kind of a sick move. The golf course death is pretty sick. Oh, too. dude, that's tea a time, good one. Tea times at ten, dude. Dude, that's a crazy. You think of going to the doctor on a Saturday? You're you, fucking crazy. The th- the craziest thing about that story is he had a heart attack that morning. <laughs> For, for, you know, I'm not gonna get in, I'm, I'm not gonna get into details a, about it. But yeah, he 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 had like a minor heart attack that morning. A family friend of mine had a minor heart attack that morning, and his wife was his wife and daughter were like, "You got to go to the doctor. Like, you got it. Like, we don't know what happened. Like, they didn't know it was a heart attack, but he was like, you know, talking about pain in his right arm or whatever. Um, and he was like, he literally said tea times at ten. Beast. And then he he proceeded to go and play like four four holes. That's a hero's death. And then he and then he died. Pour one out. Yeah, for real. What Pour a I mean, <laughs> like on its face, terribly tragic story. But holy shit, pour one out. It's a hell of a way to go, dude. Hell yeah, man. And for that, we salute you. Salute. All right, we out. Bye. That was a good. Episode.